Today, ladies and gentlemen, we got beyond that meat, that beautiful, juicy, fake, planty looking meat, baby. Now, that's what I'm talking about. I actually tried this at Tim Hortons uh, a couple weeks ago with my girlfriend, and I look so forward to breaking down this stock for you guys. We're going to go an in depth look into their books and everything new about this IPO that just happened. So let's jump <laughs> right into this. Welcome back, my passive income investors alike. Today, a really weird video for you. I wanted to make this one for a while now, and I finally figured, you know what, this morning, let's take a break. Let's get away from all the craziness going on in the markets and earnings season and this and that. We've got Apple's earnings coming out tonight. There's gonna be a lot of stress going on with some people. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of stress, but we wanna look at something that I think is really, really interesting. Now, if you guys haven't tried this yet, I really, really suggest, you know, next time you're at Dunkin' Donuts, Tim Hortons, wherever you live, US, Canada, there's so many stores that are introducing this product. Um, it tastes, um, on its own, we, we did a little experiment. I wish I took a video of it with me and my girlfriend, but we literally took the patty off of the bun and we just tried the patty. And on the own, um, because my girlfriend is Indian, um, she's like used to lentils and stuff. And we find that the um, the meat itself has kind of a lentily taste on its own. But when it's mixed with something um, on a like on a bread and bun, whatever, you can't actually taste the lentils. It actually tastes like meat. Um, but on its own, it tastes weird. It tastes off. It doesn't taste bad. It just doesn't taste like meat. But they have the texture down to a bloody pat. Like if you put this next to meat and you tried them back to back, like there might be an off difference, but the texture is dead on. Um, it's kind of impressive, really. Now, um, I don't know too, too much about this company. I actually didn't really care too much about this. I didn't do the vegan thing. I've heard about this company many times in the past, but it looks like they're finally blowing up. So let's just do a quick overview, guys, of what's going on here before we get into their books. Uh, the website itself is pretty straightforward. I do uh, overall like the website, um, but there's some things on here that I don't get a lot of. Um, like the, the, the basic part of the website is like any like fast dining what not fast food but just dining restaurants whatever it's kind of how they would show it if you were going to a restaurant you looked it up i figured but uh, let's just take a look here at one of the videos if we go to the beyond video i do not like this video so i'm only going to show you a piece of it but let's take a little quick look having kids opened my eyes to a greater purpose i know that what i do and what i say has an impact on their lives whether i'm showing them the ropes or leading a team on the court. I know they're always watching. There are many ways to lead, to inspire. What does it take? For me, it's realizing that life is more than just competition. So when my son wants to know what's most important, I tell him that my job is to make a difference off the court, to fight for progress, to make those around me better, and to look out for the next generation. Ah, typical branding every company tries to do under the sun is hire some celebrity basketball player and then let's uh, let's just put some meat on his burger with his kid and uh, call it a day and uh, that'll be enough to sell the product. I find that's usually how most things go these days. Um, now we're going to head through the website. What else is your look at recipes? They're going to guess they're going to teach you how to cook with this stuff too. Uh, they're going to give you some recipes beyond meat, elite burger. Yeah, they're really pushing the burgers that you can make, right? And something like that. it's just like meat. You get anything you make with meat, you make with this. Let's be real. Um, I don't think there's too much you have to shove down my throat to figure that one out. Um, let's see what our mission is, our impact. This is what I was looking for before. Um, I'm sure their mission is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's say their mission. At Beyond Meat, we believe there is a better way to feed the planet. Our mission is to create the future of protein. Delicious plant-based burgers, sausage crumbles, and more. Of course, of course, of course. Just where they're going to jam some statistics down in your throat. But let's just keep going a little farther here, guys, before we get into their numbers. Um, I was kind of annoyed with their investor relation page because I like looking at uh, the forward-facing projections and um, just the overall outlook for the company and what their plans are. And uh, I hate the fact that I can't find that. They mainly do these weird events um, where it's like you have to listen in sign up and you can listen to the conference call but what i like to look for actually is the uh the actual and I, i'm having a hard time finding because we got quarterly reports initial directors reports funds schedule materials registration um this is another one of those websites where i find myself having to dig uh to find uh any forward-looking information it bothers me that i can only find uh, books uh or their 10ks and things like that in their quarterly reports 
But for some reason, off the glance here, uh, and this is just a, at a glance, I'm not gonna do any crazy deep, deep, deep dives. I'm just literally gonna dive my way through this as if I'm a random investor. And it bothers me when I can't find that one report that's just gonna give me all the forward-looking information about where they wanna be, um, you know, what their main goals are and things like that. And instead, we kind of get the same jam down our throat. You know, this is gonna be like a multi-billion dollar market cap, um, or trillion dollar market cap is what they usually say. Actually, before I get into any of their financials, let me just show you one more video I thought was, was really interesting. Uh, before we go too, too much farther here, I just wanted to listen to this as well. I thought this guy had a few good points. Uh, this is one of the big shareholders in the company. So let's just take a listen. Increases the float in this company, right? Makes it a little bit more investable. And if you have a disparate view in the company, you don't have to pay 100% borrow rate. Maybe it eases up the short. You're worried about process meat. This is 100% process. <laughs> what, you think many It's 100% fake. There's not one thing natural uh, about it. So I don't see how that that PC uh, sort of virtue signaling thing. Well, listen, How does I, that work with Beyond Meat? When, if you were worried about GMOs, which actually have done some really positive things for, for right. a lot of different right. food classes, right. then why would something that you actually construct from well, chemicals be, well, listen, be it's, more? It's, it's plant-based, right? So it's, I'll give you, it's a little higher in sodium than traditional patty, right? Higher in fat, higher uh, in calories, uh, higher in price. Comparable in both lows. It will go to price parity. If you look at the new Dunkin' Donuts launch, right, uh, in New York here, their breakfast sausage sandwich is on parity with price with is that the original because sausage. Of, is that because Beyond Meat has cut its price, or is that because Dunkin' Donuts is eating the cost? I think it's a little of both, right? Okay. And I think uh, long term, though, the goal is to get the price to parity with real patties, right? I think the biggest thing people miss in the Beyond Meat story, and they don't talk enough about, is the social impact. So if you look at the IPO and the small flow, right? right. <laughs> social impact. Um, I guess that matters. I mean, Juul became a thing because of social impact. Um, but uh, let me just scroll through some other stuff here I found kind of interesting, guys, and then we're just going to hop right into their books. Um, if you look the stock up, uh, the reason I want to make a video on it today because this has been the weirdest IPO I've seen in a long time. Uh, this company only came out um, literally a few months ago, and it has been one of the best IPOs to happen in a long time. Um, it really has been. This thing has been on fire. I usually never buy IPOs because they're scary as hell. And if you bought this IPO around 60 bucks, even all the way up, guys, you would have literally over doubled your money at this point uh, in just such a short amount of time. But then if you thought you'd caught the wind and you woke up uh, you know, yesterday there, you would have got crushed. The company's been under pressure, under pressure. Da, 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 da. Uh, um, this company's going to be uh, having some issues right now, but that's because any stock on fire is going to have issues. And we know that uh, this company isn't making enough money to be worth the valuation they sit at at almost $12 billion. But let's just read through what CNBC says about the tanking and the pains that we got going on here. Let's just read some here. Wall Street analysts is normally bullish punch, especially on the recent IPO. Uh, can't bring themselves to recommend buying Beyond Meats, even as a, the stock tanked by double digits. The alternative, a company reported mixed earnings and a secondary offering after the bell on Monday, causing the stock to drop more than 15% Tuesday pre-market trading at to 187.30. The average price target uh, of the three major anal uh, analysts who came out with updates report on the stock Tuesday is 163 a share representing a drop of another 15% from the price in early market trading. Um, this is a fascinating thing. So just because they want to issue more shares, there's a lot of people taking uh, money off the table. There's a lot of uh, big shareholders that are just slowly mitigating some money out of this company because let's be real, uh, when you own a stock that goes on a run like this, and especially considering a lot of the people that own this were probably in the angel fund, uh, which just means people that got the option to buy into the company before it went public. Uh, they're probably looking to liquidate some shares at this point because they probably got a better deal than the IPO. And then the IPO is like tripled. So um, I imagine there's a lot of people trying to get out of this at this point. I'd definitely be taking some shares off the table, maybe leave some on for long term. Uh, this company might do very well long term. They're in almost every restaurant under the sun right now. It's fast food, I think, related or the fast food ones that matter like the coffee joints and things like that, Tim Hortons, Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the outlook for this seems pretty amazing overall, but let's just quickly break down the fundamentals. Um, we'll look at the Yahoo version really quick on the balance sheet, and then we'll head over to the actual website version. Uh, like I said, guys, when I ever look into a balance sheet, there's there's a few things that I look at right away. Cash and cash equivalents. 
um, is something that you that pops up first, but I don't think this matters as much because this isn't really like income. I guess it's just money they have laying around. It's nice to see it going up. That means they have a lot of income, a lot of growth. Um, but I don't know. I don't want to get too much into that. Usually the first thing I'm going to scroll down to is the total assets. Before I buy any company ever, guys, the first thing I do is scroll down to the bottom and I take a look at this total asset number. This really, 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 really matters because this is where the true underlying value of the company is. Uh, because essentially this means like how long has this company been around for? How many assets did they build up and how much have they paid off? So what we see here is total assets of um, what 133, I think these are all in millions, right? $133 million, um, which is nothing crazy. Uh, it really isn't anything too, too crazy here. And then as we scroll down to the total liabilities, which is the most other important thing right here, guys. Uh, so we got 55 million in total liabilities. So if we minus this from this, we're left with about $80 million in assets. That's kind of impressive. That means, you know, it's a good back to back. The problem is, is $80 million in assets doesn't really back up a $12 billion market cap, but it may in the future. You never know, guys. But as we take a look here, guys, we've had an insane growth rate in uh, total revenue. It actually an insanely impressive growth rate in revenue, um, which means this can't be overall accurate because these are older. Um, like this company's on a run that I don't think a company's seen in a while. Look at the revenue increase here. My goodness gracious here from 16 million in 2016 to all the way up to almost 100 well 87 million this thing's going to crack 100 million probably on next earnings uh, but if we take a look guys they're still reporting net loss um, their earnings are down 30 million on there we got another 30 million dollar loss um, not that great uh, when earnings are down that much but that comes with expansion uh, this company's growing at an absurd rate so let's just go into the actual um, filings here that this company releases because it's the only thing that is apparent on this website, which again really pisses me off. Um, I, th there's one thing that, like I said, means a lot to me, guys, as somebody that's involved in building websites and just looking at websites, it has to be clean as day. And this website's really clean, really beautiful, but the investor relation, oh, here we go, events and presentation. That's what I couldn't find because I went into investors page. I must, did I overlook that? We're gonna have to look at the presentation. That's what I was looking for forever. I'm an idiot. I'll come back to that. I'm an idiot, guys. I'm gonna look at the. We're gonna look at that next. Let's just quickly go over the numbers here. We had net revenues of 67.3 million, an increase of 287 uh, percent. Absolutely, gross profit was 22.7 million, uh, up 33 percent. Not bad. Not bad. Net loss was 9.4 million. So this looks way better than the Yahoo Finance version. Like these numbers are um, a little bit more accurately, I think, represented here, uh, because these would be for the last quarter. Obviously, the quarter that just came out uh, yesterday. Clearly. So, I mean, it's nice to see that this company is still growing at an absurd pace. I think it's going to get some uh, solid ground in, in the non too distant future here. But as we can see, guys, um, not bad numbers. Um, gross fresh platform, blah, 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 blah. We got retail. 34 uh, million. We got restaurant and food service at 33. We got net revenues at 67 million uh, compared to uh, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. I kind of like the numbers on this company, guys. They're, they're actually fairly clean for an IPO. Um, it's just that market cap is insane. It's just trying to find where that value lays in with that market cap because um, to be in the multi-billion dollar range at this point, this company should be generating well over $100 million, uh, and it should be showing at least some form of profits. But again, at the growing stage, it's like Starbucks or any company, guys. They're going to be spending money left, right, and center to try and keep this thing up. But more importantly, can I please look at their forward presentation? My goodness. Uh, for some reason, I had a time finding this because I went into the investor relation page down here, and it just brought me to that page that I showed you guys. So... I didn't realize there was a whole bring down here. And please tell me it's not a webcast, guys. Please give me something that's not a webcast. <laughs> Why are the forward-looking presentations a webcast? I'm not I'm not a millennial. I don't want to sit here and listen to a webcast for an hour. I just want to I hate this so much. I hate that so much, guys. I like um I like having something you can print off, something you can look at, you can put in a file, you can kind of flip through and take a look at when you're bored, or go on the website, open her up on a PDF format and just scroll through and look at the company's expectations. Uh, so I can see everything. I can see their current values and what they're doing. And then I can see where they plan on being. I don't want to have to sit and listen to a 40 minute podcast. Uh, net revenues to exceed 240 million, an increase of greater than 120, 170%. Oh my goodness. They have almost, um, that's crazy. 170 compared to 2018 alone. Uh, just to admire this, guys. I, I can admire what this company is doing on a whole nother level. This is just absolutely incredible growth and scale. 
like I said, it's just, is that 12 million? Like, let's put this in perspective. Here. So Maple Leaf Foods is probably another really insanely large meat company, guys, but it even sits at a $3.8 billion market cap. Obviously, it's not gonna be one of the biggest. This is a Canadian one that I watch all the time. It's actually probably pretty small compared to some of the US companies, but at the same time, um, actually, it was kind of ironic. Um, I, I met a guy that worked here uh, years ago. But anyways, um, it's just not doing like I just the market cap for a company that's actually maintaining like, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of cows and the market cap sits at 3.8. Whereas with this company, we're getting um, a pretty high market cap overall. Uh, the market cap on this guy is already well exceeding like that $12 billion mark. And uh, that's pretty insane considering we still don't got any profit margins, but obviously we could get there no problem. And when you look at the PE ratio that like Maple Leafs trades out already, it's kind of an absurd high rate. I really hate companies that trade in these high PEs. It makes it a lot harder for me to understand the valuation in it and where the actual um, the valuation lies, guys. It doesn't matter what company you're buying. In your own mind, you have to come to the conclusion at some point that this $12 billion is justifiable and you have to sit down and be able to write out why it is justifiable. And yes, at the growth rate it has right now, I can see how it's getting to this, but I just think it's a little over the shoot high. Um, analysts have given it a lower rating to about 160. Is that fair? I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not a market genius here, guys. Um, I'm not 100% certain is what is fair with a company growing this fast because uh, I don't know anything about the meat industry. I, I can't even visualize it. I can't visualize how this stuff gets sold in the stores. Um, I, I obviously understand how people are buying it and eating it and selling it. Like, I understand the product and how the product works. I just don't understand exactly the scale, the growth. I'd have to listen to the podcast, which I'm not going to do, and it really ticks me off that this company can't just put up a piece of fucking paper that tells you um, the basic fundamentals of this company, of their values, their current goals, what they've achieved and where they're going. That should be on every website. And um, all I can see is, oh, look where you can find our product. And which I guess is the only thing that really matters is that you're promoting the product. But for somebody buying into the shareholders at a $12 billion valuation, like I don't want to listen to a podcast that I have to sign up to, guys. I really, really hate uh, conference calls, to be honest. I think if you need to listen to a CEO and get a vibe about how the company's doing, yes, uh, to get an overall vibe and a feel for how these people feel about the company, yeah, I think you should sit down and listen to the investor presentation and, and the webcast or the calls, whatever, guys. I think that that helps for sure, and it's really important to get into that mode. But at the same time, I think the most important thing is understanding the core values and the future projections of where this company plans on being. So even if you listen to the conference call, you understand exactly uh, what's going on and see if it lines up with what they're saying and just make sure everything's hunky-dory but um, can't do that here guys which kind of ticks me off uh, but anyways am I going to say the stock's a buy I have no idea um, I don't know anything about it I don't understand it very well guys I'm still just looking at it at a glance I'll continue to do some research on it I'm a dividend investor so this doesn't really suit my investing philosophies too well but wow what an interesting company I wish I took a review video of actually trying the meat itself because um, it is good, um, and I really suggest you guys go out and try it. It's uh, it's a fascinating uh, product. Uh, it's a very innovative, um, disruptive product. Do I think it's gonna cap the market? Um, it might. Um, the The problem right now, guys, is the meat industry is so weird. Uh, they're actually trying to grow meat in labs. If you've never heard of that, you should YouTube. Uh, look at something really interesting, guys. Look at this stuff. Uh, they're literally trying to grow steaks and stuff in a lab to get rid of. Because if you guys don't know how the meat industry works, essentially it's one of the biggest problems with cars and carbon emissions. Um, it's it's one of the big effects of global warming. It, it, it is an insanely expensive industry to keep up with, and it's become very disgusting, as I'm sure you know, packing animals in small areas where they can't move, they can't do much, and they're just getting sent to slaughter. And um, unfortunately, it's just the way the world has been heading in a direction where people are kind of becoming a little bit more disgusted by it as we constantly turn our heads to it. So there's companies out there trying to come up with new ways of dealing with meat. And Beyond Meats is the first one, I think, to really step up their game. It's the one that's going pretty much viral. It's really spreading. Uh, they're really getting it out there. Um, but if you want to watch some interesting videos, go check out this lab test of meat, guys. Like I said, I don't understand the meat industry. I don't know where it's going. I don't get any of it. And because I, I don't have any intuitions on it, I am staying far clear of this. But I will continue to look from an outsider. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Consider slapping a like. Subscribing if you're new to this channel. I put a lot of work into these videos. If you guys want to join my own financial independence retire early journey let me know in the comment section below do you guys know anything about the meat industry do you want any uh, food stocks that interest you um, I, I would love to hear about it but uh, other than that stay cool stay awesome I look forward to chatting you real soon